Prime Minister reflects on some of Grenada's major achievements ahead of its 47th anniversary of independence. We'll have the details of this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back. With the details to the news for Thursday, February 4th, 2021, I am Sherry Ann Noel. While Grenada has had its share of challenges over the past 47 years, it can point to significant achievements, notably among them the St. George's University and construction of the Morris Bishop International Airport. That's according to Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. During an interview with the Government Information Service on Thursday, where he looked ahead to Grenada's 47th anniversary of independence, Dr. Mitchell said we need to dwell on the positives and forge ahead to continue building the country. The advent of St. George's University in country in the late 70s was, must be seen as a major success for this country. The opportunities for higher education given to so many of our Grenadian brothers and sisters and Caribbean brothers and sisters must be seen as a major success. The building of the international airport as a major hub for economic activity, particularly our tourism sector. As we know, Grenada has enormous potential in the tourism industry. Must be seen also as major successes. The Prime Minister also pointed to the liberalization of the telecoms industry as another major achievement. The advent of electricity being brought to all homes in the country, uh, for example, from the period 1984 to 1990, that we moved the coverage of electricity from 48% from to 95% in just five years must be seen as major successes. But we have had our challenges. We have had our weaknesses. I mean, it is clear that the problem we have had over a period where the rights of human beings were interfered with, we have had our challenges there. We have had problems in not being able to, to provide all the opportunities that we should to all sectors of our society. There were periods, and particularly during the colonial period, that we had to deal with many of the problems, and maybe we could have done better than we had certainly achieved. But in, on balance, we have to say that our country has grown from strength to strength. As the country continues to face challenges, including that of the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Mitchell says the consensus of a wide cross-section is that government to date has done what it should to protect its people. Moving along, the Ministry of Health plans to decentralize some of the services that are currently only offered at the General Hospital. Minister responsible for Hospital and Community Health Services, Honorable Delma Thomas, says obstetrics, gynecology, ophthalmology and pediatrics will also be offered at three health facilities across the island. It is part of government's thrust towards improving community health services to ensure that health care is accessible island-wide. During the government's weekly post-cabinet press briefing, Minister Thomas said the decentralization of health services will be done in a phased approach. Many of the services we have now, they all are provided in the capital. And so people have to leave across even Kiariku to come to Grenada to get some tests. We are in the process, a phased approach. It's a different period, but government is committed to ensuring that whatever revenue they have is placed in for health care. Even if it's been cut in some other areas, we are ensuring that we provide because health is too fragile. It cannot wait like a road or a school or any other thing. Three facilities have been listed as the first to offer these services. Princess Royal in Kiariku. Princess Alice in St. Andrew and St. Patrick Medical Center will have gynae and OBGYN clinics there in, in, in those three locations in, on a phase approach to community health services. We'll continue our general medicine. There'll be ophthalmology services provided in, in those three sites. We'll have pediatric services 
also provided in those three sites starting from February. Then we'll look at the other services in those sites. We are also looking at St. David in terms of bringing those same services there. We are working with the Ministry of Works at present to get the scope of work because there's some infrastructure work that must be done before we can have the services implemented there and we are working on that now. So as a government and as it relates to healthcare, we continue to do what it takes. Minister Thomas reiterated government's commitment to invest heavily in improving health care in Grenada. She said the sector has been hard hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. However, with the procurement of equipment and continued training of health professionals, there is hope for the sector. COVID-19 and the pandemic would have shown us that we have to invest more into our health care because the alternative sources we had because of lockdown in, in other countries like Cuba and other areas, we weren't able to get medical assistance for families and therefore we have to look in within to ensure that we provide specialization and to get specialists to come in on island to deal with some of those issues that confront our um, citizens of our country. And so we are continuing last year, the cabinet approved some of the equipment that were identified as needed by the hospital and purchased and so we have a lot of new equipment for the surgical department urologies and peds and all other departments we received them in december there are some additional equipment that was procured and purchased by um one of our other award sponsor and so we are, should be here shortly Director General of the OECS, Dr. Dilikas Jules, is calling on education ministers in the sub-regional grouping to collaborate to make education more sustainable in the future. He was addressing the 6th Council of Ministers of Education meeting hosted by St. Lucia, which was attended by Grenada's Minister for Education, Honorable Emmeline Pear. The virtual two-day meeting focuses on sustainable education, collaborative policies and practices for the future. COVID-19 has changed the education landscape, leaving governments in the region to invest heavily in technology to propel the digital learning and teaching initiatives that many were forced to adopt. During the opening ceremony, Dr. Jules emphasized that while it is important to invest in technology, it is equally important to collaborate to make teaching and learning more sustainable. He said in order to fast track the digital learning agenda in member countries, there must be changes to the framework with which education institutions operate. We must embrace the opportunities that ICT provides and act now to provide the right policy framework, the enabling environment, and the stimulus that can introduce innovative learning and teaching practices. An open innovation framework is central to this objective and has demonstrated proven success in removing barriers and making learning accessible, abundant, and customizable. Embracing open innovation in education will remove obstacles to digital education in cost, geography, time, and entry requirements by giving all learners the opportunity to access education resources at a lower or nearly no cost and in a flexible way extremely important considerations in the context of the vulnerabilities faced by OECS member states today. The Director General encouraged the ministers to brainstorm new and innovative policies and approaches to accelerate the realization of the vision of the OECS education strategy, which highlights the need for every learner to succeed. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. The National Celebrations Committee invites all Grenadians, home and abroad, to tune in to the broadcast of the virtual staging of our 47th anniversary of Independence Cultural Extravaganza on Saturday, February 6th, and Military Parade on Sunday, February 7th, live from the National Cricket Stadium on GIS Channel 22, National Celebrations Committee, and GIS Facebook pages and YouTube channels. The Cultural Extravaganza begins at 6 p.m. and will showcase the best of Grenada from all parishes under the theme Brighter Out of Darkness. Then on Sunday, we return to the National Stadium at 9.30 a.m. for a special Made in Grenada feature and military parade. Happy 47th Grenada, rebuilding together a safer, more resilient nation in these challenging times. Welcome back. 
One of Grenada's highly recognized parks, Kamahon Park, has been given a facelift by the management team of the Ministry of Tourism. Tourism Minister Honorable Clarice Smothers Corwin and her team took the time off recognizing the necessity for beautification in the park that is frequented by visitors and locals. She hopes that this activity sets a precedence for others. We are planting because we want to start and set the example. Um, gardens would be one of our focuses in the in the near future, uh, we want to encourage the private sector persons who want to get into a tourism attraction to consider gardens. And we also want to encourage uh, persons in the various parishes. We know in every parish there are wardens who clear the, the sidewalks and the, the sides of the roads. And we believe that as they clear, they can also look at areas where they can plant flowers so that Grenada can be a beautiful garden. The ministry plans to execute more beautification activities. This is just the beginning. We are going to look at um, other ways that we can enhance this location, working with private sector persons, and um, conversations have already started, though not concretized, and we want to make this place um, somewhere where persons can find beauty but also where they can find it useful um, like get internet service and other services so that it can be a multifaceted location where locals as well as visitors can come and enjoy and find useful things to do. And finally in the news, fostering level-headed youth, fly participants engaged in commercial food preparation are currently involved in the practical aspect of training. Details in this report by Assistant Communications Officer in the Division of Youth Development, June Paul. Nine participants of Project FLY are involved in practical session of food, commercial food preparation. This follows four months of intensive theoretical training. The participants who are all keen in food preparation showcased knife skills and salad preparation among other areas. Having a passion for food, Alina Penny Aberdeen says... The training will help catapult her into becoming a professional chef. I have been taught some diverse topics. Um, some of them, I believe I'll be using it throughout the rest of my life. Um, in regards to the culinary department where I am stationed currently, uh, the beginning, we go through some theory and it taught me about teamwork and how to assess situations, you know, and um, accept other people's differences and be open-minded to a lot of things. And in regards to the practical, I've been learning some new menus, some of which I'm really excited, you know, to practice at home as well and hopefully apply it in the commercial food industry if I choose to go on to that field. The no male participant in the commercial food preparation class, Romeo Douglas, shared his experience. Well, ever since I was in primary school, I, was all, I always wanted to be engaged in culinary and food preparation. Delivery food is very passionate to me. Joy Nicholas, training facilitator at the Grenville Home Economic Center, says she is satisfied with the performance of the participants. They did some, um, they learned new techniques of handling knives and, you know, just displaying the, the different knife skills. And after that, it followed a practical on salads, right, vegetable salads. And now we are into preparation of egg dishes, right? So what we normally do is to select recipes. And I don't only select recipes and give the trainees. Sometimes I allow them to be part of the selection as well. The participants will next be engaged in a series of assessments, which will be conducted by verifiers from the Grenada National Training Agency, GNTA. Based on competency levels, upon completion of the training, the participants will receive CVQ Level 2 certification approved by standards of the Grenada National Training Agency. Fostering Level-Headed Youth, Project FLY, is a one-year integrated community-based training program targeting 25 at-risk or marginalized youth ages 18 to 30 years old. Reporting for the Division of Youth Development, I am June Paul. 
Thank you, June, for that report. And with that, we come to the end of the National Report for Thursday, February 4th, 2021. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sharia Noel, thanking you for viewing.